Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my little show about why water things. In this episode, I want to respond to a request to do a video about what I do to sort of physically prepare for river guiding. And I think this is a good question. I'm not a physical trainer or physical whatever. Like, I'm a slightly chubby middle-aged man. So the, you, this may not be very good advice. If you want real advice, I'd highly recommend like talking to a physical trainer or somebody who's a professional. This is just what I kind of do. And it matters to me again because I'm in my, my mid 40s. I still guide a lot and I have to stay physically fit to guide. And so, you know, I felt like in my 20s and 30s I could get through, but as I'm getting older, my body's just getting weaker and it's getting tighter and I have to do things to stay in shape. And, and for, for guiding and just boating, there's a few reasons why. One, if you take a swim in a bad place, it takes physical fitness to swim. Go swim in the river sometime in a rapid if you haven't done it in a while. It's hard and being physically fit is gonna help you be able to do that when you need to. It's, it's, it's a safety thing. Uh, and second of all, uh, a lot of guiding and just being on the river involves carrying heavy things, carrying your load. If you can't carry stuff, people have to take that up for you. And so being able just to move things around, carry things is super important. And finally, an important dividing line between like somebody who's a casual boater and somebody who's a solid boater is whether or not you can get back in your boat, upside down or right side up. If you can't get back in your boat, that, that, that's, that's bad, right? Or if you can't, you have to have a plan or stick to super easy rivers because you need to physically get yourself back in the boat, which requires you not being overweight, uh, too much at least, and having strong like, shoulders and arms and things it takes to pull yourself back up in your raft. So with that said, this is, these are some of the things that I do to stay in shape. And I'm gonna break it into two parts. One is sort of the year round stuff I'm always doing. And part two is like how I get in shape for the season or for a couple of trips, for example. So first of all, the year round stuff I'm always doing, um, I'm always doing yoga. And uh, please don't think I'm a hippie because I do yoga. Uh, I don't do, I don't go to a studio and get a membership and like, like set out a, you know, a, a mat and talk to people and fart in front of people. Like I don't do all that stuff. Like it, it's just, I'm, it's, I, I can't get myself to do that. I do it at home, and the way I've chosen to do it is by watching uh, YouTuber Yoga by, Yoga by Adrian, and I just like her style. And it's not an hour of yoga you should be scared of. Most of her videos are like 20 to 30 minutes, just fun, just like it's enjoyable. I look forward to it, and it's not super strenuous. A couple times it might be strenuous, but a lot of yoga I've done in the past is an hour of pain. This is just 20 to 30 enjoyable minutes. And I usually bring a cup of coffee with me in the morning and do it. It's just a nice way to start the day. And it's so important to me because my hips and my hamstrings get super tight. And a lot of yoga works on hips and hamstrings. So for me, like that, it's all about loosening these things up. When I was in my 20s, I, I was able to get through it with, without doing this. But now I kind of need to do this to loosen them up. And I, I feel that as a guide, whether you're rowing a boat, like just rowing or sitting over the paddle, paddle guiding, you're sitting all day long. You're being super active. But the sitting is, again, really hard on your hips and hamstrings. And I feel like a lot of people have back problems from guiding and rafting because it is a sitting down activity generally. And so the yoga helps loosen that stuff up. And I think it's good for longevity. Also, it loosens up your shoulders and your chest and like you're using your arms. So it's great for that. So um, I'd highly recommend doing yoga. And if you don't want to be called a hippie and you just want to call it stretching, just call it stretching. But stretching isn't just like a, this isn't a five minute a day thing. This is like a 20 to 30 minute a day thing in, in my opinion. So uh, next is cardio. And this one's easy for me. I love running. I love biking. I do it a lot. And so I think having a good cardio base is critical just for staying in shape, for controlling like weight. I, my body wants to get fat. So I have to like do a lot of cardio and just like exercises to keep from getting too large. So it's just good for a base level of fitness to be doing some cardio thing. Um, doing weights is also super important for health and longevity. I just don't enjoy it. And so I can't get myself to do it year round all the time, but I wish I could. Um, but moving on, we're not to prepare to guide. If I'm gonna guide a hard trip or a couple of trips in a row uh, or for a month or something, I have to get in physical shape. And there's two different things that I do based on my commitment to it. Uh, one is just like push-ups and pull-ups. That's simple. I have my board right there, you can't see it, but I, you know, I measure it. You know, every day my goal is to do 100 push-ups and 20 pull-ups. And I don't always meet it. You know, sometimes I, I get do more, sometimes I do less. But that's my goal. And I just push-ups, you can just do anywhere. 
I have a little pull-up bar upstairs, and just push-ups and pull-ups are, I think, are so key uh, for lifting heavy things, but also for rowing and paddle bike paddle guiding. So that's a simple thing I do. And if I do three weeks of, you know, I'm trying to do it every day, that usually gets me in really good shape. I think that's a good baseline for, for staying in shape. Uh, but if I'm super motivated and I, and I can find the time and everybody can find the time, it's just, I come up with excuses because I don't enjoy it. Um, I personally do the P90X stuff, the Tony Horton videos, which are awesome or um, insanity sometimes. And you have to pay it's on beachbody.com or something, but P90X3 there's a lot of balance exercises in there. There's a lot of just like, it's a full body thing. It's not just about getting big biceps and a big chest and being looking rad out there. It's about just working on all the muscles kind of in between the how things work together. Uh, Tony Horton calls it functional fitness, which I get it. You know, I just function better when I do all these things that connect the whole body. You know, it's like, I can't explain what the exercises are, but they're complex and they a lot of times use your whole body. It's 30 minutes a day. It's kind of hard. Uh, it's worth it. Um, insanity is the same thing. I, I've done that one a few times and, and it's hard as well, but it's like 35 minutes a day. It's not that long. And uh, it's really good again for the full body, everything. So that's what I do. And again, if I'm going to guide trips, usually, you know, this year I had to guide two hard trips in August. So mid July, I really started amping this stuff up and, and I was doing push ups and pull ups as well as the P90X thing or the, the exercise thing. Um, but if it's just one trip, I might do it for a couple weeks ahead of time. But having that physical fitness is key uh, to just like, you know, keep from having back problems and being a useful part of the team. So those are my thoughts. Again, I'm not a physical trainer. This is just what I do um, based on my own insecurities, my own lack of motivation. Uh, but also the need to do it. This is what I find works for me. If you have other ideas, comments, actual real advice, leave it down in the comment section below. If you like this, subscribe. Why not? Uh, hit the like button. Likes always help me with the channel. And um, yep, that's it for this episode. See you next time. Thanks.